This is the T cell. This is the antigen presenting cell. I told you this is the MHC complex. This is the T cell receptor itself. Here's CD4 and LCK, ZAP70 we talked about. Here's this linker molecule, LAT, and this is this phospholipase C gamma enzyme. Now what we're going to see in the, thereafter is that we're going to see these waves of calcium being produced in the cell. And one of the major things that calcium does is that it binds this a protein called calmodulin, which just is a binding partner. But the most important thing in, in terms of this particular cascade and what we're going to be talking about is it activates this other enzyme called calcineurin. And calcineurin is a, an enzyme that actually removes phosphate, not from tyrosine, but from uh, serine threonine residues. And it will allow this uh, nuclear uh, factor of activated T cells called NFAT to go from the cytoplasma into the nucleus, and it will bind certain promoter elements that regulate the synthesis of the interleukin-2 gene, okay? And of course, once you have interleukin-2 made, it will go through the ribosome, it will be translated, made into protein, and it will be secreted through the ER Golgi apparatus so that now you can get interleukin-2 uh, into the uh, extracellular milieu. Okay, so in this movie, what we're going to do is basically see that particular event. So here we're going to just concentrate on the T-cell receptor uh, uh, it, itself, the initiating event here. Here first we're going to have the APC coming down and engaging the T-cell, as you would see in an uh, initiation of the response. And upon uh, the initial contact, which is a low affinity interaction, the CD4 molecule increases the avidity. The LCK molecule phosphorylates in these particular tyrosine residues within the receptor, provides docking sites now for the ZAP70 enzyme, and in turn allows LCK to phosphorylate and activate the ZAP70 enzyme. Now, the activated ZAP70 enzyme can go on and phosphorylate a number of proteins, one of which is this linker protein called LAT. It itself would provide a docking site for this phospholipase C gamma 1 enzyme and activate it. And the enzyme itself will then hydrolyze certain phospholipids that are present within the plasma membrane called PIP2 to release it to give, give rise to a number of intermediates, uh, end products, but one of which is this uh, second messenger called inositol uh, IP3. These are phospholipids that will then go on. These are one of, also a second messenger. Um, and so these IP3 molecules, now we're going to talk about how that IP3 molecule is going to modulate calcium and this other signaling pathway uh, on the left here. So the IP3 molecules will then diverse uh, in the cell, diffuse into the cell, and engage the, in the IP3 receptors that are typically present with the endoplasmic reticulum. You're going to get waves of these particular calcium bursts. And what we're going to see is that the calcium is released from the endoplasmic reticulum, again, another second messenger, and it's going to come over here and fit activate this particular enzyme complex with cal calmodulin, calcineurin. It's going to activate this calcineurin enzyme. And now this transcription factor, which is typically in the cytosol of the cell, will get dephosphorylated and move into the nucleus of the cell, where it, along with other transcription factors, which we're not talking about, will result in the uh, uh, synthesis and transcriptional activation of interleukin-2 gene, where it will be made into protein in the ribosome and secreted out through the secretory complex. So all these IL-2 molecules then will accumulate uh, into the extracellular milieu. And of course, one of the other things that occurs following T cell activation is not just the T cell just doesn't only activate IL-2, but also will make IL-2 receptors on the cell surface. And these high affinity to IL-2 receptors will then bind IL-2. And that, as I told you, is the signal through other signaling pathways we, we don't have time to talk about today to induce that cell to proliferate and differentiate. And the end result then is that this initial, initial single cell with a single antigen specificity against this particular viral protein over several days period will then be able to multiply. 